I am so grateful and so excited to have the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Dr. Edith Eger here in the podcast today. I told you already before, you've been my number one wish guest here on the show. So thank you so much for taking your time. I am very, very happy to have you committing yourself to someone other than yourself. <laughs> and you are a wonderful role model to everyone all over the world. Thank you. So the reason why um, you have been so, so inspiring to me is, of course, your, your story. And um, especially that, that you made it happen to change this horrible um, experience you had in your life to something so powerful that created for you a life of fulfillment and excitement and I think this is I, I don't know any other story to me that is more inspiring more powerful um, and I would like so much to talk with you about your story and how you changed it and how you yeah created this beautiful life of yours so maybe if it's okay for you, um, we can go back to, um, or yes. maybe wh where where would you start your story if if you would if you would tell your story? Well, where where it might be good for me to start my story to tell you that I have a story, but I'm not my story. All right, I I am not a survivor of Auschwitz. I'm a human being who went through an experience, but I don't live there. I don't set up household there. I refuse to be a victim. It's not who I am. It's what was done to me. Mm. So, so I think a victim will always find a victimizer, and uh, victims are viewed as being weak. So many times also, the victims become the victimizer. Yes. You know, I worked with people who survived the Holocaust and they called their children Hitler and many, many unfortunate uh, punitive names. So I think it's very important for us to think before we say anything mm -hmm. and see whether it's really important or is it kind. Mm -hmm. I like a lot of kindness, how to practice kindness. Uh, so, but you can, you can help me uh, so I can tell you that I was born into a family when my parents had two beautiful girls and my parents wanted a son and I came along. And so my mother also told me, I'm glad you have brains because you have no looks. And so I, I think I ask people today the messages that they carry with them because I'm sure my mother didn't want to hurt me, and she didn't because I became a learned, very learned, erudite teenager that really helped me to be today at 94, as Dr. Edith Hiva Higer. Um, I have a tremendous need to have a relationship with uh, with an adult person when I gave birth to my children. I miss my mother. I, I, I still miss my mother very much because I had to grow up very fast. And that's why I ask people many times, when did, when did your childhood end? Mm. Yes. Because some children have to take care of the parents. Maybe mother has migraine headaches. Maybe father drinks too much. So I think I think the COVID is used as really taking good stock of yourself, where you are now. And the question is not why me, but what now? Mm. So there were so many important things already in what you said. Um, you began to say that you have a story, you are not your story, which I think is such a powerful statement because so many people identify with their past, with their, exactly. with, with what they, um, yeah, with I, what they experienced. I am what I experienced. And um, okay. how, 
because it's, it's, it's what I do with it. Mm, yes, it's what but I do. If if we can dive deeper into it, because you survived Auschwitz, um, which I imagine to be the most horrific thing someone can experience. So it's a miracle. It's a miracle. So how did you how did you change that that this past didn't make you a victim, but that you are the creator of your life. How, how did you find the power and how did you change that in your mindset, in, in your feelings, in your heart? I look at Auschwitz and I use the word opportunity. Mm -hmm. It was an opportunity for me to discover whether I'm going to hate the, the people or I'm going to pray for them. I would learn uh, that that feeling of hatred into uh, compassion and caring and actually feeling sorry for the guards that they were brainwashed. They told me every day, I'm never going to get out of here alive. You see, they were not born to hate. We're not born to hate and judge people. We learn it. We learn it, and what we learned, we can unlearn, and that's what, you know, I am looking at Auschwitz as my education, how I was able to change the hatred into pity. Mm. That is so, so powerful, because so many people, they stay into this, they, they keep being in this hatred they pass it on and they hurt then people in their lives it's this hurt people hurt people and what i um, wonder is how did you how, how could you forgive something that that was done to you how what was it um something you did in meditation was it that that you reflected on it like if you if to to really i would like to um kind of make it practical for everyone who's listening. How can we forgive in a way that it's also on an emotional level for, for, forgiven? Well, the word forgiveness has nothing to do for me forgiving you for what you did to me. Mm -hmm. I think forgiveness to me means that I want to live life without hate. Because if I would hate, I would still be a prisoner. So it's, it's not me being such a good person. It's me wanting to be free and not to live in a past. Because if I would hate today, I would still be a prisoner. Mm. So I'm selfish. I want to be free. I want to have joy and passion and Wiener Schnitzel. And, <laughs> <laughs> I'm into food, as you can see, because, because I don't throw out anything ever. I, I take home the food the, from the restaurant, or I look at your food and eat up your food. <laughs> I, don't like, I, I don't like to waste. Uh, but also I had a wonderful ballet master who told me that all my ecstasy in life has to come from inside out. Mm. But I didn't understand the word ecstasy. And when I was in Auschwitz, that's when I realized that I cannot change the outside. I could have been thrown in a gas chamber any minute, but I could never take away my spirit. Mm. See, see? That is, that is what I had, and I could not ever murder my spirit. And I would say, when I get out of here, when I get out of here, because I had a boyfriend, you see, and he told me I have beautiful eyes and beautiful hands, and that's all I would ask you. Tell me about my hands, tell me about my eyes, Because if I survive today, tomorrow, tomorrow actually became a wonderful friend to me, that tomorrow I'm going to meet my boyfriend and show him my eyes. 
in my hand. Wow, this is, this is that is so beautiful, especially that that part when you say that no one can touch your spirit, no one can murder your spirit, and that you can really keep this as your strength. That no matter what is happening on the outside, is that that you have this inner strength. Yes. A couple, couple of things I like to mention to you yes. that really helped me to survive. Well, one of them was when I asked myself, does anyone know that I'm here? I felt like I was thrown out, that I did something wrong. But then again, my mother told me in the carol car, we don't know what's happening, where we're we going, what's going on. But just remember, no one takes away what you put in your mind. And this is what I tell to young people today. Stay in school. Don't smoke pot. <laughs> Don't mess with your brain. You know, I preach a little bit. Um, but to really know that what you think you create. Mm -hmm. It's good to think about your thinking. And I don't have time to hate. If I would hate today, I would still be a prisoner. So it's not about me forgiving you. Uh, I, I don't have any godly power. No. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's beautiful. Do you remember the day when you knew that you are free? When, when you came out of Auschwitz? Do you remember the day where you, where you realized I survived? Um, what happened that... I was standing in line to get my tattoo, and then I didn't get it. You will find out that many Hungarian Jews were not getting a number. So I asked, why don't you give me a number? And I was told that they don't want to waste the ink on me. So pretty soon I looked around, and my sister was across from me in another batch, and I knew she needed to be with me. See, we had to be very quick decision makers. So I did some cartwheels, uh, good to get the attention of the guard. And we were put on the top of a train and carrying ammunition for the Nazis. So um, I was not liberated in Auschwitz. I was liberated in Gunskirchen, Austria, near Linz, near Wells, mm -hmm. in uh, uh, That's how I ended up in Mauthausen. And then from Mauthausen, I survived the death march because when you, I revisited that place, every place I was, I revisited, including Auschwitz. But when you stopped, you were shot and thrown in a ditch. And the girls that I shared the brand with, when Dr. Mengele, gave me a piece of bread after I danced for him. They saw me slowing down and they carried me so I wouldn't die. The worst condition brings out the best. And I experienced that the girls, that instead of eating up the bread that Dr. Mengele gave me, I climbed up and we shared it together. All we had was each other then. And you know what? All we have is each other now. The largest Jewish population now in the world is in Germany. And when you go there, you see the names of the people who lived in this home before. The German people fessed up. They don't deny it. What happened when good people do bad things, That's very true. bad things, because the final solution was by 15 highly educated people who celebrated that they can put now 30,000 Jews into the oven without even guessing them. And it's called uh, the final solution of Eichmann. And these were highly educated people. So if you look at history, 
It wasn't really the average wonderful people. It was highly educated people celebrating that there is a scientific and systematic annihilation of people existed. So it's not comparable to anything because genocide, unfortunately, it's still going on. Yes. 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 And you and I are here dialoguing. You know, I'm kind of your grandma or great grandma. <laughs> and uh, I'm really enjoying looking at your beautiful face. Thank you so much. I'm really enjoying looking at your beautiful face and listening to you. <laughs> it's yeah. really beautiful. Um, when, when you were freed in, in Austria and you realized I, I survived, um, yes. what was your feeling? Were you, could, could you realize it? Did, did, if, if you, I, I would like to go back with you for a moment to, to this, to this yes. moment when you realized I survived that, that Albtraum. Yeah. Yes. I, yes. Uh, you know, I was interviewed by Oprah mm -hmm. and I said that I was among the dead and somehow touched my hand. Uh, and I looked up and I saw a big lip. I've never seen a man of color. And she said, was she black? <laughs> I said, I saw the lip and then I saw tears in the eyes and M&Ms in the hand. Everybody buys me now M&M's with my name on it, too. <laughs> it's so cool. I wish I could meet that, that young man who, uh, who saw me among the dead and my hand moving. And it was an amazing experience. And, and uh, when I came to America and I worked in a factory in 1949, I... I had to work very fast because my husband ended up in a TB hospital and I was the breadwinner. But when I went to the bathroom, one of them said colored. And I realized that in America, there is prejudice. It's called prejudge. So I, uh, I always went to the colored bathroom and I, uh, went to the meeting with the people of color and I ended up in 1963 when I was singing We Shall Overcome and I got a hug from Martin Luther King wow. and I marched on 1963 with, Mar with Martin Luther King. Wow. So, you know, love is not what you feel, it's what you do. Hmm. Words can be very cheap commodities, but um, you are committing yourself to keep history alive because uh, we want to do everything in our power that it will never, ever happen again. Yes. Would you say that, um, because you said that you knew already back then that no one can touch your spirit and that, that your spirit is untouchable, that it's yours. Um, would you consider yourself already back then as a spiritual person or was it something that was just, it was so natural to you? I was... Uh... A lonely girl, very shy, painfully shy. Um, I think it's important to let you know that I was more of an observer mm -hmm. rather than the participant. Mm -hmm. And I think that was kind of preparing me for Auschwitz, that I was able to reach out. I was able to give my sister um, the bread that I saved from the night before because she was heavier, much heavier than I was. She suffered more from hunger than I did. I think in Auschwitz you found out really who is going to do it and make it and get through it. I could look at people 
I remember I had a girl from Yugoslavia and she loved her country and I loved my country, Hungary. And uh, she told me that we're going to be liberated by Christmas. And you know what happened? Christmas came and left and then she died. So it's important. Some people are either very helpless or they become totally grandiose, you know? They're going to save the world. And I think it's good to be realistic rather than idealistic. What would you say was the... Because your, your newest book is called The Gift, which is a beautiful book. Um, what would you say was the the most um, valuable part of your soul that could yes. emerge through this experience you had? Yes. I think it's about what happens when everything is taken away from you, just like my mother told me in a cattle car, because that's just what happened. Everything, and we stood there in our nakedness, And everything was taken away, anything materialistic. And by the way, I must tell you that my sister Magda was the prettiest. And she is now 100 years old. Wow. And she'll tell you that she is 99. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Hungarian women do. But I also want to tell you that she asked me when we stood there in our nakedness, uh, How do I look? <laughs> How do I look? So I had a, a choice then, as we have a choice now, whether you pay attention to what you lost or something that is still there. And I remember realizing that I became Magda's mirror and I told her, Magda, you have such beautiful eyes. And I didn't see it when you had hair all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is so beautiful. Yes, wow. is it kind? Is it kind? Is it necessary? Some things are not really worthy of saying because it's not kind. Yes. So that's why I tell people, don't say yes, but, but say yes, and. Mm. Yeah, give me the but, I give you an and. Yes, and. You're a beautiful, one of a kind diamond. There'll never be another you, which is true. Wow. Self love is self care. It's not narcissistic. Yes. That's yes. what we say here. It's true. It's, It's true. Not narcissistic. So love yourself. Get up in the morning and say, I love me. That's, that's good to do. Yes. And I can tell by looking at you that, that it works. I mean, you look like life itself. So, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And hope, and hope, hope. Yes. And, this, uh, is, this is something I would like to ask you. Um, if we look at the world right now, um, many people are losing hope or it's so difficult. It's, there are so many things happening again and again yeah. and history repeats itself and it's so difficult sometimes to not lose hope and to to still believe in what is going to come um yeah. what would be your message to maybe also my generation the younger generation how can we yeah. make sure that we create a better future a wiser future and that we really learn from history and become more conscious more loving kinder What, what can we do in a day-to-day -day life to create that future for, for all of us? Just look at Martin Luther King. You see, you never give up. You never give up hope. Hope, hope. You never, I never ever gave up. I said to myself, you know, it's temporary and I can survive it. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, it's very important that what you think you create And if, if you say to yourself, I don't like it, it's inconvenient, uh, and not what, but, and it's temporary, and I can survive it. 
So pay attention to what you're paying attention to and think about your thinking. And look at something, I like to call it an arrow, that you have a goal. You have a goal, you have an arrow. It's, I just came to, uh, to attend a wonderful conference in uh, Arizona, and I have beautiful mountains there. And I came to the realization that life is about climbing a mountain and you slip and you climb. And I never stop climbing. So I have yet to arrive. I'm still, you know, yes and not yes, but. Mm. So it's what you concentrate on that's important. So pay attention what you're uh, focusing on that has to be in alignment to get you to the goal that I like to call a, an arrow that you follow. Mm. It's good to have a goal. It's good to know that you keep walking. And my daughter calls it edeism, that you're not revolving, but you're evolving. Mm. Nice, I like that. I, I, I like to call that the kind of a butterfly that you go through the ages and the stages, and then you shed the chrysalis. You give up the need that for everybody to love you or accept you. You get rid of the word rejection, that no one rejects you but you. And so I pay a lot of attention to the self-talk, the self-dialogue. For someone who is listening right now and who is has this voice in her head that is bullying herself sort of and telling her you're not good enough you're not lovable um, how yeah. can someone start to create this positive self-loving dialogue what would be the first step well you may really pay attention the way you talk to yourself because that changes your whole body chemistry mm. And it just takes a little word, yes, and, rather than yes, but. Mm. You know, when you criticize yourself, you know, you keep telling yourself uh, that you're not good enough. You are good enough. You're one of a kind. There'll never be another you. You know, you become your own person who is going to say, Yes, I am. Yes, I can. Yes, I will. Rather than I don't like that, I don't want that. It's not too good to be against something. It's better to be for something. And love conquers all. Yes. Thank you. So I you have... have to love over what you hate. Yes. Because you were not born with hate. You're not born to judge another person. You learn it. Mm. So you can unlearn it as well. Yes. I have one last question that I ask every of my podcast guests. So imagine you will turn a hundred and many, many years. So you have very many years also in front of you. And one day there will be the day that is the last day of your life. And I will come to you and they will say, Dr. Edith Eger, I'm so sorry, but everything you ever did is deleted. So your books are gone. All the interviews you did are gone. But I do have a white sheet of paper and a pen. And you could write on this white sheet of paper three wisdoms. If nothing else would be left from you, what would you tell the world on this sheet of paper? What would you write down? What would be three wisdoms you would like to pass on? I celebrate what I gave to the world rather than what I can get from the world. I am very happy in my deathbed to know that I did everything, my power, to see to it that what I experience will never happen again. Uh, I am happy because I lived in the present and think young. 
I remember I'm dying as I am dying. I, I celebrate two things, living in the present and uh, turning hate into pity. And love can conquer all. Thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank that, you. Sorry. I hope I'll see you. I give you a big hug. Yes. And you have, you have some Wiener Schnitzer waiting for me. <laughs> and I also, I send you all my love, all my blessings. And I really, really want to acknowledge you from deep down in the bottom of my heart for everything you give and teach us and pass on in, in, in everything you do, because I think it's so important and it's so inspiring. So thank you so much. And I really hope that next time when I'm in the States that I can see you in person and um, yeah, meet you and talk to you and learn more from you. So thank you so, so, so much. Take care and thank you. Thank you. Grüß Gott. <laughs>